Okay, hey, uh, this is a quick video on the Modbox VR tools. So uh, I'm using an Oculus Quest right now, hooked up into with the Oculus Link. Uh, so I'll go to Build New and start with this basic template. Okay, so uh, one thing I should explain is that uh, in uh, edit mode in VR Modbox, it uh, there's a it defaults to grab locomotion. So there's two different locomotion types or two different kinds of locomotion you can pick from. One is for plane locomotion, which has physics and defaults to just directional. But in uh, edit mode, it defaults to this grab locomotion, which allows you to um, easily move around the level and then hold the uh, move button on both controllers to scale yourself. OK, so uh, in Modbox, each controller always has uh, current tool selected. So it defaults with the selected tool, which just allows you to grab entities and scale them. And um, you can use the radio menu to select a new tool. So when sometimes when selecting a tool, it selects the tool for the other hand too. So if I go to the select pointer, both my hands are now the select pointer, which allows me to scale things at the same time. And then if I went to say the voxel tool, the other hand becomes the uh, voxel brush. And put down that uh, and then scale myself so it does a little bit better job. Okay, so uh, the next thing I should do before going into the different tools is uh, when you do open a tool in Modbox, it can open a menu like this. So a useful thing to do is be able to l is uh, lock the menu. When you lock a menu, it just puts it in place and it uses it puts it in your uh, VR uh, space. So it doesn't matter what size I get and where I move, I always have this menu here, which can be useful for something like the Enter the Assets menu to have that and then just be able to quickly place a bunch of things and then not have that change, uh, to not have that close. It can also be useful for something like the Edit tool, where if I want to edit something and see its properties, I can then lock my menu and uh, and see its properties and see how it changes. If you say editing in play mode, you can debug what's going on by just adding one of these and then seeing the properties as they change. And you can use the bottom gizmo to move it around your area and the top one to uh, scale it. Uh, okay, so just to quickly go through some of uh, each individual tool, I uh, have the selected tool that I uh, default with, which lets me grab entities and scale them. So I can scale the other entity in the other hand with the scale gizmos. If I hit the circle one at the top, it scales them all uniformly. Uh, with it selected in my hand, I can then uh, do different radial options. So I can quickly go into the edit window with edit. Uh, hierarchy mode, I'll probably go into later. Physics, let me turn physics on so it actually collides with the environment and other entities, which is good for placing. And then angle lock is a good way to position it in VR. I'll do with something a better thing that actually shows an angle. It lets me position in VR where my hand is, which can just be a useful way to uh, precisely place it and keep it and be able to move it around and keep it at the angle that you want it at. Okay, so uh, grid snap. I'll turn on grid snap and then lock, which can be a good way to uh, precisely set the scale and keep it at certain units. So right now the grid is at 0 0.5 and it's scaling at 0 0.5 units every time I move. I'll turn off uh, grid snap and turn off lock. So by default, entity, some entities, primitive entities, are always auto-connect, meaning they connect to one another. So if I add a cube or a ramp and connect these together, in, I can just hold one and connect it to that. In test mode, or I mean play mode, they will connect as a single physics body. But if I turn off auto connect on that, so it, this entity doesn't connect to anything, they won't connect in play mode and stay as their own physics bodies. OK. Uh, there's also create prefab if I have something selected and I want to create a prefab asset out of it. Uh, static would just mean it uh, does, will not move in play mode. So I'll turn on auto connect again, and then when I connect it to that, it, uh, it's static in the world. 
I can delete that, then the other one will fall down because it's not connected to it anymore. And, uh, and then clone just lets me quickly clone entities and then I can undo that. Okay, so uh, that's everything for the selector tool. And then the select pointer is pretty much the same idea where you're selecting entities and you can uh, use the gizmos, but you can now do that from uh, far away. So it's an easy way to uh, select something, grab its uh, uh, drag gizmos, and then I can use the uh, touchpad joystick to uh, move it closer and back. And then I then have all the same options uh, in terms of turning on physics, cloning it, uh, editing in it or turning on gravity. I'll just try that. Okay. Um, and I can switch the gizmos to remove gizmo, uh, scale gizmo. Oh, gravity still on. There we go. Uh, scale gizmo, rotate gizmo, and then I'll switch it back to drag. Uh, I can put it on multi select to select more than one of these. So uh, I'll create some more entities. And the gizmo was showing the center of them, so I can move them both at once. And I could do something like create a prefab out of these to quickly create more of them. OK, so next I'll show the uh, entity brush, which is a recently added tool to uh, just quickly create entities with a bunch of options. Uh, so I'm in block mode right now, and this lets me place entities like uh, and quickly uh, sculpt them in a way so I can add a few spheres and then set their size uh, we'll undo that and I can go into I'll turn on snap to grid and then have them snap to an angle and then go to the cube tool and that just lets me place uh, blocks sort of uh, precisely on the grid. So this is a good way to say make a structure and then have it connect together at the end. But I'll undo that again. Uh, and uh, I can also set the color that it can default to and the material. But I'll go to uh, whole sculpt, which is a way to sculpt uh, primitives. So uh, when sculpting it, it automatically connects after it's done. So you can see the line between them. That means when I go into play mode, this will connect as one body. Oh, that's still static. Okay, I'll go back to the brush tool. Uh, I can also have snap to grid on. So that just means I can keep this uh, the sculpting on a grid. I'll turn that off though to not have any, uh, to just be free form. Okay, I'll do those. And then uh, the last one in the brush is the surface, which lets me just quickly place entities on a surface. Uh, it can be, uh, I can do that with uh, some buttons, although that's incredibly tiny, maybe a door. And I can turn off uh, the, uh, I can set the scale if I wanted to. Of the new entity. So that's slightly bigger. And there we go, smaller. And I can turn turn off angle on placing so it doesn't uh, angle to the surface I'm placing on. Uh, next, I'll uh, I'll just switch to this delete tool to uh, just quickly get rid of some of this stuff. Okay, uh, so in uh, world options, I can uh, go through the mods that I have enabled for the creation, just like in desktop mode and assets is also like desktop mode where I can browse uh, the different app assets in the mods and uh, say preview a sound effect. Uh, version history, I can see all the changes that I made or other clients have made and undo, redo. Uh, I can go to world settings, which is uh, also just like desktop, and uh, say if I wanted to, I can, I'll lock this menu. And I'll go to 
I can turn off uh, post effects, change the post effects to something terrible, uh, change the weight of it, or but I'll go back to cartoon day, and the photo zero point five. I can change the environment or go into the sky and chart and change the sky box. So just something weird. I'll go to tune sky though. Uh, and then just like in desktop mode, I can set the sun intensity, but I'll leave that as it is. Okay. Uh, game managers, again, just like desktop mode where I can uh, set game managers and go into the scripting for them. And then uh, editor settings gives me a few options that I have. Say uh, some of these are specific to VR, like my locomotion. I have the uh, it's another option to set the grab look to set the edit locomotion. That's also in settings. I can reset to the floor. I'm giant now, so my scale is at 20. Reset to center, and also set uh, back to one. But I'll go. I'll make myself giant again. And um, I can set the height also. And then there's a few other options that are editor options and gizmo options that are also in desktop mode. So uh, this would be just a few more tools that I can go through. Some of them are pretty easy to uh, understand, like the uh, material tool can just be a good way to quickly change the material material of entities. And it's the same as it is on uh, in the material desktop window. Uh, the wiring tool can be a uh, a way to wire entities together, which is um, a different video on wiring, but I can select this entity and that, and I can say on event, and so it's easier to lock these. On event, uh, in uh, main start, do, let's say in sphere, let's have it die. So um, this is going from the cube to that on the start, on its start event die which just breaks that up. Okay. I'll go back to the wiring tool. I can reselect that and delete that wiring. Uh, static tool is a way to just quickly set things to static. And then coloring tool is just like the material tool where you can just quickly change the color of things. And voxel tool uh, opens this other voxel window where I can go to our different voxel modes. I can also switch the voxel modes in uh, this hand between surface mode, which lets me point and then sculpt. I think I gotta increase the size a bit. And maybe increase my size. And uh, um, sculpt mode lets me sculpt in my hand. I can set the cursor distance and the size of my brush. And the brush strength. I'll go to uh, block mode, which lets me place a block. And uh, I think that's it for uh, the voxel tool. There's a coloring mode, which I can color, which just use, works like the uh, sculpt mode. Or I'll try out the um, mesh edit tool. I select a primitive. I confirm that I want to mesh edit it because uh, it will then save the mesh in the creation. And I can uh, then change and edit its vertices. So right now I'm in vertex mode and I can use, to, I can switch between to face mode if I want to select the face of the mesh or uh, edge mode if I want to grab its edges. And then I can reset the mesh to, uh, to confirm to go back. So I can edit that again and it'll be back to, uh, so if I don't want to save the mesh in the creation anymore. And when I go to play mode, it'll create the physics body to match the mesh that I created. Okay, so I think the final thing to go through, through for a bit would be the, uh, you can edit MP script in uh, VR. So if I go to edit tool, I'll select this one. I can lock my menu. Uh, I can edit some of its properties. Set as physics material, set as material here. I'll go ground. And I can also go into MP script. So MP script in VR is usually best to do with a locked menu, like like a locked tool, like I have now. I'll just call it locked. I'll just call this script one, and then I can start adding in code in the same way you can on desktop. 
which is pretty much the same. One thing that we're still figuring out how to add is a right click, uh, which might be a button or it might be a drop down separate from this. There might be another button on here to uh, right click to say copy code or paste in a large amount of code. And I can always zoom in and zoom out on these windows also. Okay, so one final thing I'll show is uh, creating prefabs in VR. So I'll uh, lock that menu and I'll just create create a quick uh, structure thing. Add that one and then this arch. I can turn physics on to uh, precisely place it at the top. Okay, so to create a prefab out of it, I can select it with the select pointer and uh, go select connected and then create a prefab that way or I could use the prefab tool. So I'll go to the prefab tool, select that one, select connected. And a prefab is a way to reuse those two entities and create instances of them. So I'll go create prefab and I'll call this one uh, Bob. Okay, so now that I have this prefab created, uh, I've created an asset of it, like an entity asset. So now it'll show up in the entity asset options to uh, create a few more of. I can quickly uh, clone that to create a few more of them. And then um, I can select that and uh, unprefab it if I want, which would mean let it uh, be individual parts. So it's a way to group it, but also create an um, a asset out of the entities. So one thing I'll show with this also is after I have it uh, selected in the prefab tool or the edit window, there's a few other different ways, but I can enter the hierarchy mode. So in hierarchy mode, it's kind of like prefab mode in Unity where I'm editing this and I want any edits I make to apply to all the instances of this. So now I can do something like say, add another entity to it and it'll show me the bounds that I have that I'm working with right now. Add another entity at the top. I can go to something like the material tool and change uh, the material at the bottom part. And then now when I'm done it, I can exit prefab mode and apply those changes to all instances of that. And it applied the changes to this one too. And now when I create it in the assets window, it has these the changes that I applied. And uh, that's it. 